Alright guys, Dominic here for KitGuru and today we can finally share some concrete information on AMD's RX 6700 XT. At the time this video goes live, AMD will have just finished the official presentation of this new GPU. So here we can go over the specs we know so far and also take a first look at some performance figures which have been shared by AMD. First things first though, in this presentation we only got wind of a new 6700 XT. No other GPUs were announced, so if you are hoping for a 6700 non-XT, then I'm afraid you will be disappointed. What we did hear though is confirmation of pricing, and that is $479 for the 6700 XT. So that's $80 more than the 5700 XT and $20 less than Nvidia's RTX 3070. For those of us in the UK, we weren't told confirmed UK pricing, but personally, I would guess around the £450 mark. The launch date is going to be March the 18th, and that is the same for AMD's reference design and all of the AIB, so you should see all of those cards ready for sale on March the 18th. That is if we can assume a good level of availability. And unfortunately, this kind of is the topic we need to cover first, as I'm sure there's going to be plenty of comments asking about supply, or rather the lack of supply. So we were able to talk with AMD about this yesterday, and they were fairly non-committal. However, they did later send out a statement which we can read here. In AMD's words then, with the AMD Radeon RX 6700 XT launch, we are on track to have significantly more GPUs available for sale at launch. We continue to take additional steps to address the demand we see from the community. We are also refreshing stock of both AMD Radeon RX 6000 series graphics cards and AMD Ryzen 5000 series processors on AMD.com on a weekly basis, giving gamers and enthusiasts a direct option to purchase their latest Ryzen CPUs and Radeon GPUs at the suggested e-tail and retail price. The key phrase for me there is significantly more GPUs available at launch. What this actually means or what it will mean in practice, we are just going to have to wait and see, but the one thing I would say is Having 100 GPUs is significantly more than having 10 GPUs, but still wouldn't be enough to meet demand. So whatever happens on March the 18th, can't really predict it now. We're just going to have to wait and see what stock is like. Unfortunately, based on the events of the last few months, I can't say I'm too optimistic. But like I said, we're just going to have to wait and see. Getting back to the GPU itself, though, we'll start off with product positioning. Here, AMD was very clear that this is a 1440p GPU for gaming with max settings. AMD also called out some research from IDC, which shows that the 1440p monitor segment is actually the fastest growing monitor segment year on year, looking at data from Q3 2019 to Q3 2020. In terms of the specs then, we only have a high level overview. We have been told that we will get a deeper dive into the GPU in the coming days, but that information will be embargoed until our review. For now, we can go over the high level specs of the GPU though and just give a few thoughts on what AMD has presented. First up then, we know the 6700 XT is going to be using a new piece of Navi silicon. That new GPU die was actually shown in one of the slides. Comprised of 40 compute units, with RDNA 2, each compute unit holds 64 stream processors, so that gives us a total of 2,560 for the 6700 XT. This is exactly half the number of cores as the 6900 XT, and it's actually a third fewer cores than the RX 6800, which is quite a lot less, considering the price difference is only $100. While we were only told 40 compute units, we can read between the lines and infer what we know from the RDNA2 architecture, so we would expect to see 64 ROPs, 160 texture units, and there will also be 40 ray accelerators, with one ray accelerator per compute unit. Next, we come to clock speed, and this is a really interesting area for me, as AMD called out a rated game clock of up to 2424 MHz. Bearing in mind that the RX 6800 has a rated game clock of 1815 MHz, 
This is over 600 megahertz faster for the 6700 XT. For me, I'm looking at that really high clock speed and guessing it's going to offset some of the performance loss versus the 6800 as a result of having a third fewer cores. That is obviously quite a lot less cores, but if you can add an extra 600 megahertz to the game clock, that is going to mean the performance gap isn't going to be as big as it was. That is obviously just speculation though, and game clock can vary depending on the application. So again, stay tuned for the full review where we will look over clock speed behavior. As for the memory now, as well as infinity cache, we'll take these together as they're effectively two sides of the same coin. First of all, AMD was very clear that with 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory on the 6700 XT, they were very transparent about that being a sort of one up over Nvidia with the 3060 Ti and the 3070 both having eight gigabytes of G6 memory. The key here though is unless AMD has done something quite weird, which I can't imagine they would have, 12 gigabytes of VRAM means a narrower 192 bit memory interface. And assuming 16 gigabits per second memory speeds, we can expect memory bandwidth to come in at 384 gigabytes a second for the 6700 XT. Now, this is slower than the 3060 Ti and the 3070, which both have memory bandwidth speeds of 448 gigabytes per second, despite having less VRAM. Of course, this is where the Infinity Cache comes in, as AMD will tell us that the Infinity Cache is going to give a boost to effective bandwidth speeds. We don't know how fast the cache is going to be. We would expect it to be slower than the 128 megabyte cache found on the uh, big Navi GPUs, for instance. Right now, all we know it is a smaller cache at 96 megabytes, and I imagine a large part of that is due to reducing the size on the die itself. The last key spec thrown out by AMD now is in terms of power, as the 6700 XT has a total board power rating of 230 watts. For me, this is another really interesting area. 230 watts is only 20 watts or 8% less than the RX 6800, despite the 6700 XT having a third fewer cores. I hope to ask AMD about this as soon as I can, but for now, my guess would be the extra power has kind of been funneled into increasing clock speed as opposed to housing more cores. And that could be beneficial at the lower resolutions like 1080p and 1440p, which is what this GPU is all about. That is just speculation for now though, but 230 watts is what we know. And it's interesting there was no up to 230 watts, which to me means for now at least we won't be seeing a rumored 189 watt model, though it's possible that could be announced down the line. In terms of early performance numbers then, First of all, I would say, remember, these are first party benchmarks, so do take them with a healthy dose of skepticism. And of course, our full review will have plenty more gaming benchmarks for you to look at. They are useful as a rough indicator as we can kind of work out where AMD is positioning this GPU. So the 6700 XT was shown in eight modern titles going up against the 3060 Ti and the 3070. Performance does seem to range from anywhere to slightly slower than the 3060 Ti in Watch Dogs Legion to being significantly faster, I would say, than the 3070 in Assassin's Creed Valhalla as well as Dirt 5. Across all eight games, though, we are looking at performance roughly in the same ballpark as the 3070. For me, this raises questions as to how big the gap is actually going to be between the 6700 XT and the 6800. We already know that the 6800 is roughly 10% faster on average than the 3070 at 1440p. But if the 6700 XT is basically matching the 3070, then it wouldn't be a particularly large gap between the 6700 XT and the 6800, despite having a third fewer cores. Of course, there is also clock speed, so really just comes back to we're gonna have to wait and see until we can benchmark it ourselves. AMD did also show performance figures for six more esports titles, but these were only presented without any comparison data, so they don't really tell us a whole lot other than the fact that they are marketing the 6700 XT as a 1440p 165Hz capable card. There is also ray tracing to cover though, and if we cast our minds back to the initial announcement of the 6800 series, I did think it was suspicious at the time that AMD didn't go into any comparisons 
showing the 6800 series against Nvidia's GPUs in terms of ray tracing. And it's exactly the same here. Not a single performance figure was shown in terms of ray tracing. We only got a list of games that will support the technology for the 6700 XT. I know from my own benchmarks that in a few games, the 3060 Ti can actually beat the RX 6800 when it comes to ray tracing. So bearing that in mind, my hopes for the 6700 XT aren't going to be that high considering it has 20 fewer ray accelerators. Of course though, it's just something we're going to have to benchmark and find out exactly what sort of ray tracing performance this card has to offer. Last of all, we also have a look at the new dual fan reference card. In all honesty, this looks exactly what I'd expect a reference 6800 to look like if we removed one of the fans. Nothing really was shared about it other than we were told the length of the card, which is the same as the 6800, meaning it's 10.5 inches long or 267 millimeters. We didn't get a look at the power requirements either, but considering the 230 watt board power rating, I would expect to see 1 8 pin and 1 6 pin PCIe power connectors. The final, final thing to note, and the reason I've left this till last is it's not really to do with the 6700 XT, but AMD's Smart Access memory is now coming to Ryzen 3000 series processors, excluding the 3200G and 3400G APUs. You still need a 500 series motherboard, so that's B550 or X570, alongside a compatible BIOS, but that should open up SAM to a wider range of AMD Ryzen users. So then, that is basically everything we know so far about the new 6700 XT. It has been a pretty high level overview and we are hoping to hear a lot more technical details in the coming weeks, but those will have to be presented in our full review and we can't share them here. What we do know is that this GPU is set to launch on March the 18th and that's both in terms of the AMD reference board as well as custom boards from the likes of Sapphire, PowerColor, XFX and more. Priced at $479 MSRP, this is $20 less than the 3070 and in my personal opinion it does seem to be relatively competitive but we are just gonna have to wait until we can benchmark it ourselves and put it through our list of games. Really though I think the key factor that will determine the success of this launch is just how much stock AMD can get in the retail channel and like I said based on what we've seen this year I'm not going to be too optimistic but really we're just gonna have to wait and see. So then guys, that is really going to do it for this video. If you like this kind of new style piece, toss us a thumbs up, leave us a comment down below. We're always on board for any feedback. You can also subscribe if you haven't already. Check out a link to our Discord server in the description below where we'd love to chat with you guys. And also be awesome if you would consider backing us on Patreon where you can see some of our content early and get access to exclusive giveaways. Until then though guys, I'm Dominic for Kit Guru. I'm going to crack on with some benchmarking and I'll see you in the next video.